How's everyone doing today? Very well. Yeah. Great. <laughs> um, before I, first of all, congrats on the movie. It's fantastic. Uh, but before we get started talking about it, the only reason Collider gets to be at the Toronto Film Festival is because of our sponsors. I want to give a huge thank you to Nordstrom Canada for allowing us to cover movies like Ford Ferrari. Um, jumping right on in. This is one of the things that's, I think, so fantastic about this movie is it's the kind of movie that is really tough to get made nowadays. People are always, you know, there's a lot of escapist fare, but this is a really smart adult movie that doesn't dumb down anything for the audience, great characters. Talk a little bit about, for all of you guys, reading the script for the first time and realizing what kind of special material this is. Definitely felt uh, for me that this was, uh, uh, in, in the best sense of a word, in the best sense of the word, uh, an old school movie. And I, I think rarely do uh, movies like this get made nowadays. And I think the only time they do is when they're in the hands of uh, a, a real genius from the best of the best. And there's very few of them out there that get to really do what they want. And that's, uh, I can definitely say that about, about Jim. I think only he gets to make this movie, only he knows how to make this movie. And I think he knew exactly what he was doing uh, every step of the way. And uh, he, uh, he's, he's, he's one of the best. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I think that's the thing. When I when I first got the script and you read it and it's it's one of those scripts that you're like, OK, well, this is something different. This feels elevated. Um, you know, Jazz and John Henry Butterworth, they did such a great job. And it was it was one of those things where you're like, I can't wait to see how they're going to put this on screen. And, you know, saying that with Jim, you knew that he had exactly every scene was already shot in his head. He knew exactly what he wanted. And it was such a joy to feel like you're in such safe hands on set you know it just every day was very cool <laughs> yeah it was a really good script the script was really good and uh, <laughs> i don't the think the story was really good and compelling and uh it was kind of all on the page at the same time it's the kind of movie the milieu of the film it's just something that movies do uh, better than any other medium uh fast cars uh, they just don't work as well uh, on TV or in the theater, you don't see a lot of fast cars in the theater. So uh, or it's in novels. For that <laughs> it's very cinematic, and uh, so James was obviously the guy to make this movie. I don't know how the hell he did it. I, I see, to read it, you're like, I don't know how the hell anybody does this. Uh, how you marshal all these forces to make a film like this? Uh, it takes somebody like James to do it. If you want, if you guys want, um, to I you know I. It was one of those scripts where you read it and then you like you just go into this world and you forget about time and and you like you finish it and you're like oh wow that that where did time go it was like two hours or three hours i just read this script and it you know it, it, i just had to keep reading keep reading keep reading. just a beautiful you know and also the way um they describe the cars and the races and all of that is, is something that i've never seen before in the script you know how how real and raw it was and how um you know you could picture it in your mind and then obviously i met jim and he he's incredible he's such a you know descriptive and um he's such a he's, he's he knows exactly what he wants and when you get in the room he tells it he tells you what he wants in a sentence and you get it and you and and you know what to do and he re he's really supportive and and I had a great time with, in the audition, just talking to him about the scenes, just playing around. And I was really, you know, really excited to work with him. And I think those these two things together, those two are just the, the dream team of a movie. And so, you know, I, I was very excited to start it. I think in the time where movies have become primarily, you know, escapist, particularly when you go to see a movie in a theater these days, it's oftentimes to go see escapist cinema that's primarily made by computers, you know? And the thing is, when you read this script, I, I didn't assume that they were going to do it all practical, but they did. They made all these sets, you know, so there's that opening sequence in the Ford factory and to walk into a set where they've been culling cars for years of 1963 Fairlanes. For two years, they've been gathering pieces and whole cars to make this movie to build that set and then to be there and see the way that they were doing that with the Ferrari factory and the Le Mans racetrack and all these different things that there was, this was practical filmmaking. I always described it as the Lawrence of Arabia of car racing movies because that's what it is. One, one of the things I also think, one of the reasons the film works so well is that 
you have time in the film to invest in the characters. It's like an hour and a half. The first hour and a half is essentially a lot of character stuff. And none of the characters are like, uh, they're all three-dimensional. You, and there's not these crazy exposition dumps. It's just really great writing. As actors, talk a little bit about preparing for these roles and uh, I guess just talking about the characters and preparing. I don't know, that question really wasn't good. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll change that, you know. I don't know. Change that in post. Right, exactly. I'll, I'll, it's so a fine it, question. Right. And we, we all did a variety of things to get ready. You do what you need to do to get ready. I, I didn't know anything about cars, and I still don't. Uh, but, you know, read the book of the history of this thing, tracked down an old uh, Henry Ford biography, watched some YouTube clips, watched the Le Mans 66 documentary. You do what you need to do to figure out where, where, where you are. And then, to, yeah, to be on the set, like Josh was saying it, to have those cars in front of you, to see those, to see those cars working, uh, it, it's transporting. It, it really puts you in the, in the time and the place that, that the movie is made. I mean, I'm very glad that uh, I was playing a character who was, you know, in awe of these cars because I don't think I could have hidden my excitement if I was like playing someone who knew about cars and was like, you know, over it because they were just, it was so incredible, like watching the races and, and, and as, you know, as he, they're, they're all there, all of the cars and they're to hear them all and to, to see them all. And it was just amazing like, in one place. And, and, you know, it just, it, I didn't really have to act to be honest, cause it was, it was all there and, and, you know, they're really beautiful, to be honest, the cars, actually. They're, I'd never noticed that before. You know, they're really stunning. Um, so that was cool. You know, I, that was, I guess, preparation for it, seeing those and, yeah. Yep. So much of this experience, I imagine, for all of us has to do with the fact that it's, you know, headed by two extraordinary actors. You know, Christian Bale is an utterly brilliant actor, and to see him play this character where he has moments alone in a race car where you deeply care about what he's going through. That's a very hard thing to do. But also the movie has a real uh, Butch Cassidy Sundance feel to it where there's this extraordinary friendship between those two guys and also between everybody. This movie, I think, boils in the ideas of friendship and in love and, and in combative friendships and com this amazing scene between her, her uh, Molly and her husband where they're... Um, their love for each other is overwhelmed by the things that they're going through and then they have to battle through that. I mean, just to me, that's where the movie really excels um, and, and why it's so thrilling to watch is because you care about the people so much. I actually, I'm going to switch the question. So we're at the Toronto Film Festival. Some of you have not seen the film yet. Can you actually watch yourself on screen or will you introduce the movie and then just walk right out of the theater? I'm going I'm to watch it. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet, so... I'm excited. Um, I like watching it. I mean, it's it's definitely a part of the it's a part of the experience is seeing the finishing product for me, and and seeing you know all the hard work that went into that. And I don't like to watch it twice. I I think once is is enough, and and then I'm then probably the next times I won't see it again. But but I, yeah, I'm very I'm very excited to see it actually. It's fun. I, I'm I'm gonna watch. I mean, I, I yeah, it's, watching myself is not my my favorite thing in the world, but but. Uh, uh, this one, I'm, I'm really, really excited and uh, eager to see what, what everybody did, how Jim put it all together. And, and um, I, I, I can't wait to see, you know, the thing that I feel like is, is most difficult is, is how to, um, for, for the race sequences to be delivered in sort of a cogent way where you really understand where we are in the race. And I feel like the aim here was to kind of go after that also with the relationships and where everybody is with the relationships and um, and how the two of those things get get married. And, and I know that that's what he was trying to do. And I know that he did it. And I can't wait to see how that works because I have no idea how that's possible. You <laughs> You're going mean? to walk out very happy tomorrow. Right on. <laughs> Um, oh, we've got both of them. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's that thing of, I'm luckily there's so much of the film where I'm so excited to see what everybody else did and to see the actual mastery of the filmmaking. Um, that's a lot, the desire to see that's a lot bigger than, you know, the horror of seeing yourself. But um, there will be moments of that. But it's, it's more about, you know, we had the most incredible crew as well. I mean, that's the one thing. There was such a great vibe on set. And it's to see the culmination of everybody's work. Um, I think that's a really exciting thing. So I'll stay.
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, for all of you guys, I, I, uh, I'm fascinated by the process of actors and what you do to get ready on set. Um, do you have, for all of you guys, do you have any sort of like pre-shooting rituals, things that you do before every take? And has that sort of changed through your career? I mean, I tried to bully Noah before every take just to sort of get that good. Uh, I used to get beat up by Christy and Katrina <laughs> to put me in my place. You know, just to get that good familial tone going. <laughs> One of my favorite moments of making a movie happened actually in Toronto with Christian Bale, where I was driving to do a scene um, in American Psycho with Willem Dafoe. And the car had picked up, the van had picked up Willem Dafoe and myself from this little. Uh, hotel that we were staying in down the road here and I got in and I was just like god it's Willem Dafoe I'm about to go do this scene in this movie and Christian Bale and all of it and I was you know 19 years old or whatever it was and I was so nervous that I, I couldn't I mean it was a borderline shaking and I I just leaned forward and I was like Mr. Dafoe I just gotta tell you I'm so nervous right now and he goes Jesus so am I and I remember that moment being like striking to me and he turned and he said if you're not nervous something's wrong and so to me it's always on a daily basis that thing of if that feeling is there, that sort of excitement and uncomfortableness and, and even kind of a terror that goes into it. Now, you lose that in the process of making a movie over a long period of time, but that, that feeling in the beginning that you either nurture or you work with uh, to, to, to compel yourself forward, I guess, is part of it, that you're taking a bit of a risk in a way. I, I, I think for me it's uh, it's uh, different each time. I think that's what's really uh, exciting, and um, I'm I'm really grateful for uh, uh, about what we do and about about the journey. It's like the the stew of of all the people coming together and and all the elements coming together e each time. For me, it puts me in a completely sort of different mindset and a uh, completely different process and. Um, uh, I love that. I love that it's different. I love. Uh, I really try to push myself to be open to uh, what, what's what's kind of around me. And and uh, um, this was one for sure with uh, where I knew everyone around me was incredibly uh, wonderful. And anywhere you look, there's somebody that you believe. There's something that you trusted. You believe the the furniture. You believe the set decoration. You believe the cars. And you you, you surely believed. The, the people around you, the other actors, and, and um, there's just a lot of truth and, and, and definitely believe, believe in the director. So yeah, it was, uh, this was a special one. I don't have a lot of uh, rituals, uh, a ritual way to prepare. Uh, it was a great ensemble spirit. There was a great ensemble spirit on the set, people encouraging each other and, and, uh, and, and Jim leading the way. I, I, I don't know, there's so, <laughs> something about the way he, he marshals all of that. It's inspirational, and and with all of the cars and the exhaust and the heat and the and the extras and the I mean the, it was a massive production. So to try to get your focus down to just where it needed to be, you really had to rely on the other actors, the other people around you, and that's what builds that ensemble spirit. Which was it was really thick uh, on this film. I know all of you guys are probably always getting in every take, but once in a while, I'm sure you mess up. Um, can you share for each of you, is there a day that you are still embarrassed by from me messing up a take and why? Every day. I mean, God, if you're embarrassed by messing up takes, you would just have to quit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think, I think that's you, also part of the process. I was going to say, or if you can share a story from, because uh, no, I, I, I like hearing about the, deep, you know, the, the, the fun on set. I have a scene in the, this film with uh, Matt where Jim decided that he wanted the scene to sort of take place over the course of these steps. And I'm telling you, I, I, I fancy myself a pretty athletic dude, but these were the most <laughs> awkward steps you've ever seen. And I had to say this line, shuffling, and I knew I was either going to definitely fall, but I, 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 I just, I mean, it was literally just basically falling forward and shuffling down in the, in the most awkward way. Uh, so I, th I, I felt like that was pretty ridiculous. And every time I just, Matt would just be laughing at me, just saying, you look so ridiculous on those <laughs> steps, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, there was a scene when um, Christine had to carry me into the house. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a small person. And it was just hilarious to watch him, like, have to haul me up and, like, carry me. It was like a quite a long walk up to the house. And he was just, his arms were, like, aching afterwards. And it was, like, torturing him, you know. 
That's what he's also did. very thin in the movie. It's not like he's carrying an, a bunch of extra weight. I mean, that's one of the things I think we, we sort of forget. He had just come off Vice, um, yeah. where he had gained a bunch of weight, and I think he had a very, very short time to lose it all. And we were sitting one of the first days we had a read-through, and Noah and uh, Christian and myself were sitting in a room talking about just different stuff with the script. And Noah and I had just ordered lunch, and we're sitting there chowing down, and it wasn't until it was all, we were almost finished that we realized that Christian's sitting there drinking a black coffee, looking really, really hungry, and <laughs> not very pleased with either of us who were just shoving chicken into our faces. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't recall making any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I accept. <laughs> You're looking at me. <laughs> uh, the same day of your sh your your stair shuffle, uh, I had a you know one of those f phone call life moments happening uh, where I was stupidly had my cell phone with me and I answered my phone and blah 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 life happened. So I walked back on a set and it was an early on in the shoot for us and I just totally messed up my lines. I mean terribly so that Matt turned to me and said. Are, are you with us, man? And I was like, yeah. and I literally had to say, no, I'm, I didn't in my head. I was like, no, I'm not. But I probably should not have my cell phone on set for the rest of this movie. Because when Matt Damon says, are you with us, man? And you know you're not, then yeah, I realized I needed to be. <laughs> um, that, that's fantastic. Uh, my last thing for you guys, uh, it's uh, another uh, acting question. Sorry for uh, indulging. The A lot of times I've spoken to people and they enjoy rehearsing shooting the rehearsal, and other times they love doing, uh, you know, three, four, five takes in, they feel like they're, they're comfortable. For each of you, is there, do you feel like you're, you're usually on on like that first take, or it takes you a little while to sort of warm up? Well, I mean, I mean honestly, it's really different with every job, job you do. There's different people, different director, different sets even, and um, you know, sometimes, obviously, I feel like a lot on this because there were quite, there were some quite big sets. There were some kind of like broad sets. It was good to rehearse and it was good like because there was you know, obviously a lot of cars and there were sometimes explosions or w stuff that happened and and so you know we had to get it right. We only had a certain amount of time time to do it. So I think for on on this one, I think rehearsing is is was was necessary before we before we de delve, delved into the the scene. But you know, it's different. It's different on every job you do, really. I've spoken to a bunch. Well, I want actually everyone to answer, if you don't mind. Well, I think, and John and I can speak about this quite a bit because one of the things of what, the way Jim works is Jim knows exactly what he needs. So he will ask for even just a, a, a fraction of the scene, and he'll ask for that fraction just to be done. Sometimes just repeatedly, and so it, some directors you work with where they'll want, you know, the whole scene fluidly done multiple times, or in Jim's case, he's so precise in terms of what he needs that he will just ask for that. And then oftentimes he'll say, okay, do something different mm -hmm. in just that piece. And that piece, he might not exactly, he knows what he's searching for, but he's not necessarily, he'll, he'll give you, and he's directing fully, not just every actor, he's directing every aspect of the movie, meaning, the lighting, the cinematography, all of it. Uh, this my f One of my favorite moments of this movie is that Jim was very frustrated with the extras during the scene, uh, the opening scene of the movie where Henry Ford comes out and gives the speech. And he said, there's this extra deep in the background that's doing something very awkward with his hands. And he came out and he's yelled at all the extras that he said, listen, all these actors, everyone's here doing their job. If you're not doing your job, I'm gonna CGI you out. Right? And so he made every but then he comes back in and we're all sitting there watching. Do you remember this? And Jim's Jim turns and Faden's like, Why are you paying so much attention to that extra? And he turns and he says, I am a doctor. I don't look at the face, I look at the pancreas. <laughs> and that moment I was like, it's Jim doesn't look at the face, he looks at the pancreas. <laughs> like and I was like, that's totally what he's like as a director. He's but, looking but wait, at the complicated elements of the inside of the body, even the details that are so minute that nobody else is looking at, which is what makes him so masterful. But that's why the movie's so good. Do you guys w want to share anything? Come on, John. I, I just think <laughs> I, I am so, 
<laughs> I, th I, I think really the same. I think, you know, you ju just like what Josh said, he's, while, while he's shooting it, he's editing it, and, and, and it's not about, I think sometimes you're sort of required to go in and, and vamp and perform, and, and it's all about what we feel. But I, I felt on this one, you, you, you know, to... to for lack of a better word, you're, you're kind of like a cog and, and your, your performance is being tied into a car going around a track at 120 miles an hour that you've got to hit at the exact right time and you trust implicitly in your leader and, and, and he wants it to be a very, very certain way and you absolutely trust in his way and you gotta, you, you gotta kind of do that. So it's, uh, it's less about what you're sort of feeling on the inside and whether you're killing it or not. It's more about, am I, am I fulfilling his, his vision? Cause you, you believe in it that much. Yeah. Sure. I think also <laughs> the funny thing with Jim is, you know, he would talk so much about this movie for him was about relationships. Cause he was like, I don't even like cars that much, you know, which is crazy. I don't, crazy. Think any of us I don't do. even, you know, but he, <laughs> he had such enthusiasm for the story and the heart of the film. And that I think was his primary goal every day that every scene moves you or makes you feel something you know so it wasn't even though he's a master with all the technicality of it and that was incredible to watch you know he's like this conductor of this incredible symphony but he just kept the focus of the heart of the film sort of front and center all the time what what everybody else said i agree with <laughs> you're, you're a little long-winded sir well i the the you ask about if we prefer rehearsals or more takes or fewer takes, and I, I just don't know. I just have to trust the director on that. It's not, I don't think I ever turned to Jim and said, I need another take on that. I assume that Jim would ask for it if I needed it, <laughs> sure. and if he felt he had it, then he had it, and we were done and moving on. And uh, So it's really a Jim question more than it's oh, an us Jim. question. But listen, I'm basically out of time, even though I have 75 other questions. I really mean it sincerely. It's one of the best films I've seen this year. You guys are going to love it for the people that haven't seen it. Um, thank you so much for coming in today and uh, talking. And I wish you guys nothing but the best. Thank you. Thanks Thanks very very much. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you.